What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with the Giro d'Italia part three today with YouTube Pro Cycling and in the previous one we did of course take the Maglia Rosa with Raffle Micah on the Paso Lancio. Still very close though, all to play for with 15 riders really within two minutes and in particular the shark Vincenzo Nibali looking so so dangerous. He was the best of the GC riders back on stage eight, as you see right here. There are a few surprises with a couple of potential GC riders dropping away. The likes of Theo Gegenhart, Dan Martin, Simon Yates too. Uh, but like I say, all still to play for in the GC. We hold the Maglia at Zura as well with Andrea Baggioli. And so then in today's stages, we start off with the stage I have been dreading the most, a 50 kilometer individual time trial. We haven't been too bad in the time trial so far, but I am certain Raffle Micah is going to lose time in this one. An absolutely gruelling stage to start, but then we have some hills on stage 12, stage 13, and a very difficult climb, the Colle San Carlo, uh, and a downhill finish. Stage 14, and a very interesting stage. I am intrigued to see how this one plays out with a very long descent to the line and then we have a final chance for the sprinters on stage 15. Captain Price is first off the start ramp for us but we're going to focus on the GC guys I feel today. As TJ Van Garderen approaches the first time check we have Captain Price sat in third place but some way off the time of Jonathan Dibben and it seems to be a very good time because TJ nowhere near the Brits either. The rain is now coming down in Italy as TJ crosses the line he goes into third place we now have plenty of strong time trialers on course like bob youngles but they're all well down on jonathan dibben at this first split quite the time by the brits where does tobias fosco he is so far behind right now and the top 10 in the gc are underway we have a plus three day on patrick comrade that is just perfect as we have the big dogs getting underway right now. Here we go then, Balco Molima is underway, second place in the GC, and Raffle Micah sets off in the Maglia Rosa. Can we hold on to this at the end of the stage? A plus one day could well help us for sure. Uh, we'll monitor how we're doing against the other guys at all of these splits, and I have noticed Jonathan Dibben must have been on a plus five day because Rowan Dennis is only just ahead of him at the second split with Wout van Aert uh, behind Jonathan Dibben. So will it be heartbreak for Jonathan Dibben? At the finish, Rowan Dennis takes the best time, no surprise there, with Foss in the top 10 um, as we cut back now to the GC guys. Looking at the top five then, Hinley has lost a lot of time at that first split. Carapaz is better um, and Balko Molma is the best of those guys. I've started off pretty steady with Micah. I'm going to push this now to 75. Can we stay close? And we've already lost one minute and 20 seconds. Okay, two minutes down in the GC. Damiano Caruso is on an absolutely fabulous run right now. I think he's going to go ahead of Bob Youngles. And he does. 50 seconds down. And because it's so close, he could genuinely go into the pink jersey at the end of the stage. Hugh Carthy trying to fight back after losing the Maglia Rosa on the Paso Lancio. I think he's going to put in a pretty good time into the top 10 provisionally. Barze loses about five minutes. Vlasov is struggling too. And Micah is two minutes and 37 down at the second split. Well down on Molima Quintana ahead of Hinley. Um, and I think we're behind Carapaz as we have Patrick Comrade coming to the finish, actually almost catching Alex Vlasov up the road, who is on a terrible time. Vlasov could well lose the GC right here. Comrade, though, almost catches him across the line. Comrade uh, loses three minutes. Vlasov about five minutes in total. So Warren Bargill has been overtaken by both Vincenzo Nibali and Adam Yates. Nibali is on a very good time. I am so worried about the Shark at the Giro. Adam Yates loses almost four minutes. Vincenzo Nibali just over two minutes. That is a very good time by Vincenzo Nibali, I believe, into the top 10. Bargill loses seven and a half minutes to Rowan Dennis. Let's see Miguel Angel Lopez. 
Very good time trial by him, who is usually struggling in the TTs. Two and a half minutes down for Miguel Angel Lopez. Richard Carapaz is next across the line. For the Ineos Grenadiers, two and a half minutes down for him to a very good t- uh, a very good time. Whereas Jai Hindley, over five minutes down again. Hopefully, we can go a little better than that. As Nairo Mancantana started in third, he loses about three minutes. Balcomolima isn't too far behind Nairo Quintana on the roads. And let's see where the Dutchman goes. Just over two minutes down, he will definitely take that. And Micah has some way to go. This is going to be a painful final kilometre and a half because we're going to lose the pink jersey, that's for sure. Just how far down are we going to be though with the pole? Let's push it 99 to the finish. We are done and we lose 3 minutes and 50 seconds. No surprise then to see Rowan Dennis win the time trial at the Giro. Great ride by Jonathan Dibben in second place. We had a few good performances, three riders in the top 15. Conrad did pretty well, but Micah, 34th in the end, and we lost a fair chunk of time to the likes of Quintana and Carapaz, who really I was aiming to finish with. Miguel Angel Lopez too, definitely. However, it could have been much worse. There were plenty of GC riders like Jai Hindley, who lost just so much time. Vlasov too. And indeed it is, Damiano Caruso, Going into the Maglia Rosa, I think he started the day in 15th place. He goes into the pink jersey ahead of Balcomolima. We have Nibali, Carapaz, and then Micah now within a minute in the top five. And this is so close right now with the top nine pretty much within one minute as Wout van Aert powers himself right up into the top 10 again. We get underway then for stage two of the Giro. A new Maglia Rosa is here. It looks a bit strange. Hopefully Micah can fight back for that jersey later on and with plus fours like this he hopefully definitely has a chance and today I think Decker could well be our man. It depends how difficult that final climb is Um, so let's see how we get on. Also great to see Captain Price on a plus day. I think Benji pointed out in the previous episode he had two minus fives in a row. Captain Price, come on mates, we need good performance today. So personally, I'm not worried about going up the roads in today's break where we have Loic Vliegen up the roads again. Samuel Battistella is up the roads. I think he's been in every breakaway at this race, but probably the most dangerous rider here is Bob Youngles. We're now on the Velastra climb right now and we have Adam Yates and Theo Gegenhardt pretty much riding off the front because the other domestiques can't stay with those two guys so strong are any of us at this rate uh, at this race despite only having six riders and we have just one minute to the breakaway we crest the Velastra climb then and we still have David Decker in this group but yeah I'm pretty sure that final climb will be too difficult for the Dutchman interesting to see then that the Maglia Rosa Damiano Caruso is right at the back of the peloton so let's make sure we're staying to the front here Comrade can go to 80 as well. With Teo Gegenhart pacing on the front, we could well catch out the Maglia Racer here. And look at this, Caruso is fighting so hard to get back to the front. And there you go, we have a split. So Baggioli is going to tempo at 85, but Gegenhart is already going a lot faster than that. David Decker is doing his very best to stay um, in this group. Can't really see it happening though, to be fair. But Andrea Baggioli come to the front as Gegenhardt is now done for the day. Puts in a little kick, my man, up to 85 right now. We're riding off the front right here. I'm pretty sure they will bring us in. But with Caruso out the back, we have literally just risen off the front. Okay, that's one way to go about it, I guess. Uh, now they're going to try and close us down uh, with Baggioli. A great ride today. They will bring us in here. Uh, so there's not too much point in trying to stay away. However, Baggioli is pretty much done. And Caruso, I can see, is in the group behind, is he? Uh, let's try and come round now with comrades. Wout van Aert is pushing very hard. I'm trying to as well, but getting blocked off by my own rider. But if we take a look behind, we have Dyer Quintana. I thought that was an Iron Man. Caruso trying to be led back in by Peo Bilbao. I'm pretty sure he is now gone for the day. Patrick Conrad putting in a brilliant ride 
um, as we have Adam Yates. Is he trying a move? Let's continue tempoing, making this a really difficult stage with the Magliarosa in crisis. So Bob Bungles remains 40 seconds off of the front. What a rise by the Luxembourg man today. We have just 18 riders at the front. Of course, we know the Magliarosa is behind. Bilbao is doing his best. We have the likes of Bookman, Simon Yates behind as well. Baggioli can try and stay with those guys. Uh, we have Chavez, Gegenhart, but it seems those are the main GC riders out the back. And looking at this group, no one is doing any work with me. Ballerini still here. What a rise by the sprinter. He has to be a favourite for this stage, but we definitely want to try and keep, of course, Caruso behind. So we have an attack right now. Vincenzo Nibali, the shark, is on the attack in the descent. I did send Micah to get some water right there. He can now get back in Conrad's wheel. Um, and we're going to rely on some other guys here because we've done most of the work to this point in the stage. We can't do it the whole way. Nibali is attacking for the GC. I'm pretty sure Caruso is done here because he is done. Bilbao is done. He won't be getting back in. Massive moment. Conrad falls from the main group. Van Aert, Quintana go down as well. Micah is safe in the front group. But what a shame for Patrick Conrad who falls alongside Van Aert. We had, I think, Quintana as well go down. Vlasov too. What a moment for the race. But Micah is still right at the front here. Oh boy, how unlucky for Comrades and those guys. As we now come into the final few kilometres, Nibali is still off the front here into the finish. He's going to gain time in the GC, I believe. Let's try and follow uh, Davide Ballerini if we can. Let's just sprint with Micah for the line. Young is going for the stage, but Vincenzo Nibali is on one at this Giro d'Italia. He wins the stage ahead of Young Heartbreak for Young We finish in the main group behind. Oh boy, that was absolutely hectic stuff. And poor Wout van Aert's comrades, Nairo Quintana, so unlucky in this group as well as Vlasov. Boy, oh boy, it's all happening at this Giro. So unlucky for Vincenzo Nibali because he gets the same time as everyone else. There was a pretty clear gap there, if you ask me. But the big losers on the day are, of course, Damiano Caruso. He loses pink because he just wasn't strong enough today. But Wout van Aert, Patrick Conrads, he could have challenged for the stage, I believe, if he was in the front group. We have Nairo Quintana and Vlasov as well, the two big fallers um, in the GC group right there on that descent. So Micah does now move up to fourth place um, as some of their guys drop back. So unlucky for them. We now have a clear top seven all within a minute of Balka Molomer, who is now the new owner of the pink jersey. Balka Molomer sets off then in the Maglia Rosa, but I would quite like to go in the breakaway today. So let's try and put our own jersey, the Maglia Azura, of course, up the roads in the form of Andrea Baggioli. So an early breakaway has formed. We have 11 riders up the roads and it's a very good group instantly because Julia Ciccone is here. We have Madawa here, a very good rider in this save. Kangert, and we have Youngles again, who almost won the stage yesterday. So this isn't going to be easy for Andrea Baggioli. You know what, guys? I don't think this breakaway is going to the line or even the climb because they are about to be caught. I am in a group up the roads with Baggioli, but can't really see this working out at all. Here we go then. We enter the foot of the Colle San Carlo. I want to make this a very difficult climb. These guys can go straight to 93. In fact, Milano and Deca could probably just sit up for the day. They should be fine like that. And we have Micah and Conrad, of course, our leaders today. I don't think the breakaway are going to take the stage. They don't have a massive lead. Battistella has three and a half minutes right now. Let's watch out for attacks as always and see how this unfolds. And this is a very difficult climb already. Rowan Dennis setting an absolute tempo on the front. 78 mountain right now. We need Conrad, I think, to protect Raffle Micah, who is feeling probably a little better than the pole today. But uh, he needs to give himself up for Raffle Micah in the GC. We still have 6k to go in this climb. Let's try and move up in this group. We're just getting blocked off all over the roads as Bilbao, Vlasov, Lopez, Carthy and Nibali all attack. I was trying to come through to try and get to the front, but we're just blocked off horribly. 
Conrad getting blocked off again. Just block central right now is the Giro Italia. However, we're still in the group with Balka Mollema, who is really, really struggling, it would seem. Uh, let's try and come to the front again. It's Vincenzo Nibali is attacking yet again at the Giro. Okay, we're in a good position. We can go to 75. Let's stay like this. Nibali, though. What is he on at this race? It's unbelievable. We still have 3k to go in this climb as Caruso and Hindley look to make a move. And Mollema seems to be really, really struggling today. So we have 3k to go in the climb. We have yet another move. I cannot really follow on this occasion. Carapaz, Lopez, Vlasov and Hugh Carthy look to attack as Balka Mollema completely explodes in the Maglia Rosa. Boy, oh boy. Uh, first, it happened to Hugh Carthy on the Paso Lancio. We still have Wout van Aert right here, powering past Raffle Mica. Comrades is done for the day. Can we try and stay with the best guys on this climb? At the front, we have Nibali, Hindley, Carthy, Lopez and Carapaz. We have some catching up to do with Raffle Mica. Can we try and push the tempo in the final kilometre up to Vincenzo Nibali? But he's attacking again. Leave me some space, please, on the right-hand side of the road. Micah really pushing it to the top. Can we catch them? We're not going to be able to. So we're going to come into the descent at a deficit right now. Nibali is the strongest again. We then have Hindley, Lopez, Carapaz and Carthy. Micah trying to push on. We have Bardet, Bargill, Martin, Caruso and Velasov in our wheels. Van Aert is just behind. Bookman is there. We have Comrades in this group. He's fine like that, I believe. But... Uh, Quintana has been dropped again. Let's cut back to the front because we have 3k to go. Uh, we're not the best descender, so we can try a little attack. I can't see it working at all, though, with Raffle Michael. We're a minute behind Vincenzo Nibali up the road. Vincenzo Nibali is going into the pink jersey. He wins another stage at the Giro. Behind him, we have Hinley, who will get second ahead of Carapaz, Lopez and Hugh Carthy. And Raffle Micah loses about a minute, 55 seconds in the end to Vincenzo Nibali. Boy, oh boy, that was very, very difficult. But behind all of them, Balko Molema completely cracks under the pressure. He loses over three minutes and the pink jersey in the process. This has been an incredible race already, but Vincenzo Nibali looks absolutely unstoppable right now. What is going on? He doesn't have the best attributes in the race, that's for sure. If you look at the likes of Carapaz or Lopez even, they look stronger on paper. Micah, probably quite similar to Nibali on paper, maybe slightly worse secondaries right there. But Vincenzo Nibali looks absolutely unstoppable right now. Uh, poor day for Balcomolema as Nibali moves into the pink jersey. He also takes the Chiclamino jersey from Wout van Aert's Baggioli. Holds on to the Maglia at zero though. I am absolutely intrigued by this stage because we instantly have a massive climb. I want to get some guys to the front, if not to tempo, to try and get up the roads in the breakaway. But Bagioli, a minus five day. It was so crucial. He got some points in the KOM today too. So I think this could be a valuable day to put a couple riders up the road. In fact, more than a couple because I currently have four riders there. I want to get TJ in today's breakaway. I don't mind dropping a few others back, but TJ on a plus four day, showing his 2020 Tour de France form, it would seem, needs to try and join today's breakaway. Okay, so it does seem we will be allowed to put the majority of our squads in the breakaway. I can't believe I've been allowed to do this, but anyhow, let's try um, and continue with this breakaway. We have TJ, Captain Price, of course, Battistella is here, Chavez, Simon Yates, 10 minutes down in the GC, is up the road. Milano, Baggioli, Zecca for us. Domenico, Pozza, Vivo, Youngles, Formolo, Cataneo. It's a very good breakaway. The strongest of the race so far. They have uh, just over three minutes. So we've built a pretty nice lead in the breakaway. And we've conserved enough, I think, with Andrea Baggioli. But it does seem now is the time they launch the attacks. And Baggioli... Needs to try and follow. Let's try and get in the wheel of Simon Yates. It's crucial we get as many points as possible at this summit. But we're some way back on this minus five day. We can't really get too many points. We got a few in the end 
up to 67 it's not too bad to be fair so captain price has done a wonderful job today he can probably set up i think as we now enter this intermediate sprint we're going to try and take these points with Decca and Milano I think like we did a couple of stages ago why not try and add to our total in the Chiclamino jersey they're gonna let us roll across here that is perfect right there these guys can relay 88 push it we have just over two minutes still as we enter the foot of the final climb giving TJ a little buffer I'm not expecting to win the stage with TJ but hopefully he can be a real benefit to raffle Micah. So on the Paso del Sempioni and Captain Price, Decker and Milano completely explodes then as we enter the climb because they have worked so, so hard today, uh, which is quite obvious, um, I think, by their energy. Anyhow, Baggioli is trying to press on on the front with TJ Van Garderen in his wheel and we could well try and attack up to those guys. Okay then, 18k to go for us in the climb still. Of course, it's very long and the peloton have now slowed down. I expected it to be a very hard climb from the start and TJ has so much energy remaining. In fact, I'm gonna swap these guys to go like that instead. Uh, so maybe I could try an early move up to them. Let's see how the tempo progresses with Hagen now coming to the front. And the pace really has picked up quite a lot now as Foss is completely done. He's straight out the back. We have Conrad and Micah only left in the peloton as Baggioli is dropped from the breakaway. We only have TJ now remaining from that original group. And so 8K to go. TJ not looking too great to be honest. He doesn't have the uh, the greatest base stats. Although now we're seeing the likes of Kataneo, Gorka Izagiri drop away. Three minutes is the gap to the main group. The pace really isn't anywhere because Baggioli can just hold on pretty comfortably. If we're going to launch something on this climb, we need to do it pretty soon. So seven case go, I've decided now is the time. Patrick Conrad comes to the front at 87. Baggioli will go pretty much straight out the back. TJ just holding on in that front group. He's not going to tempo anymore because Conrad is going to try and make this really difficult end to the climb and try and set something up for his leader, Raffle Micah. So 3k to go to the top. TJ is going to let those guys go a little bit. He can tempo at 50. We now have 50 riders remaining in the main peloton. Comrades is going to go out the back pretty shortly, if I'm not mistaken. Dan Martin, though, comes to the front. He is so, so good. 42 riders are now here. The tempo is just too quick to try anything proper, but I'm going to try anyhow with Raffle Micah on the attack. Right now, it's a nice move. Let's put TJ up to 65, 95. Right now, Micah in the wheel of his American teammate. That works pretty perfectly, but can we push it into the descent with a gap? It's proving quite difficult. TJ giving his all for Raffle Micah. We might have to go with Micah, you know. Let's try and go with Micah. Put TJ in his wheel. And it's all back together just like that. 21 are together again. 18k to go then. And we're watching out for attacks right now. TJ is just paroling on the front of the Peloton Formula. Surprisingly, it was dropped. But Simon Yates, Chavez, Bob Youngles and Pozzo look to be set to challenge for the stage. Unless we can try and catch them right here. But to be honest, we're not going to take it in a sprint. So it's not really in our interests. Okay, so Patrick Comrades is going to try and just get back into the main group. I think he will do it just now. Uh, we have a very quick tempo set by Dan Martin and they are putting the breakaway under some pressure. So Comrades, try and get to the back of our train and now it certainly is in our interest to work with Comrades in this group to try and bring in that breakaway but I think it could well be too late and they have the stage in the bag. So up the road, Domenico Pozzovivo attacks with two kilometers to go, but he does this up. We have Chavez, Yates and Youngles. I think Youngles may be the favorite or even Simon Yates, probably the best sprinter on paper. It will be a sprint. They leave it very, very late indeed. And Bob Youngles does make up for that stage that Nibali stole from him by winning stage 14 of the Giro d'Italia. We can sprint with our guys and comrades may have had a chance, but in the end, it will be a top five, will it? Top six for Patrick Comrades and no gaps in the GC. I gave it a real go in the GC, trying to give Micah an opportunity, but in the end, probably a mistake to drop TJ 
and denying him any chance of challenging for the stage win and Nibali remains in pink. Underway we go then and a pretty kind of mediocre day of race day conditions. Bardecker and Milano so pretty perfect for us. Let's see what we can do in a final sprint. So the end breakaways, five riders. We have Postelberger, Lisa, if we can see, Nico Tens, Kunderkortz and no surprise, Samuel Battistella up the road. So 90k to go and we have some pretty strong wins right now, 22 kilometers and they're going right across the road all the way to the finish. We need to stay aware and we could well try and capitalize on this. And now the winds rise to 31 kilometers per hour. I'm putting Foss, TJ and Captain Price right to the front. Let's try and do some big, big damage up to 95. Come on boys, let's make some echelons. But sadly, we're not quite strong enough at this stage. We're gonna have to just sit up because no gaps have been made. We've tried for well over 10K, I think about 20K or 15 kilometers there. So we're set up with our guys, maybe go again in a bit. So unfortunately, there will be no gaps with 18k to go. Only the breakaway remain up the roads. I'm going to try and just sit in here, try and conserve our energy. We only have Comrade Milano and Decker really left for a lead out because of trying uh, to create those echelons. 16k to go. Hopefully, we can make up for it with a good sprint. Okay, we have 10k to go. The breakaway are pretty much caught. Andrea Baggioli is now done for the day. He can just go at uh, maybe 40 to the line. I have put Raffel Micah on the Sharks wheel, Vincenzo Nibali. That should keep him in a good position as we have Comrades Milano and Decker already. Dagan Kolb, Dion Smith are on our wheel, choosing our wheel of all the trains today. Uh, we have the Quick Quickstep and Movistar to our left though. If Comrade can go up to maybe 95. Don't want to go too early though, as we have done on so many occasions at this race. So far, it's a little climb right now. Uh, Comrade is keeping our guys to the front though. So this is pretty good, 3K to go. I'm pretty happy how things are going. Uh, Comrade is going to struggle though. As he comes to the front right now, we go to 99 with Sebastian Milano into the final kilometre. David Decker coming right to the front. He goes for the line, past Milano. Can we take the stage win? Not today, Fernando Gaviria. Ahead of John Dagenkolb, David Decker, a decent top three. And that was a much better sprint by me. Close performance and a good podium. Well, guys, this is shaping into quite the race. I would say we weren't able to add a fourth stage win today. However, it's all happening because Vincenzo Nibali is now in pink and he looks unstoppable. Raffle Micah started the day in pink. We were never going to keep it on that time trial. We are though still in with the shouts of a podium and even the Maglia Rosa. We did lose the Maglia at Zura. I didn't notice after stage 14, Bob Youngles has stolen that from us. We definitely want to try and get that back with Baggioli and we're third in the Movistar classification. And looking quickly ahead to next episodes, it is going to be a big one because we start with the Monte Bondoni, a massive final climb. Another one again on the Plan de Coronez, I think you say. Anyhow, we have one hilly stage, maybe for the punches, I would say, rather than a sprinter. Then we head to the Paso San Pellegrino for a massive day in the mountains. That is then followed by the Paso Gavia and the Murcia Rolo before finishing in Aprica. So two days in a row with over 5,000 meters of climbing to decide the GC before finishing the Giro d'Italia into Milan. So all that remains to be said is if you enjoyed this one today, smash that like button, drop a sub to my channel if you're new and let me know what you thought in the comments below. I'll see you for the finale on Wednesday.